uh, we start right now. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this information session for Master of Science in Accounting, Finance, and Analytics at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, I'm Dr. Tian Feng, who is a, a program director, and I will introduce this program in the, the first half of the information session. And then later, I will pass the mic to uh, Dr. Jinan Zhao, uh, who will uh, discuss the details of the information, uh, the programs. Okay, so uh, let me start uh, from the beginning. And so again, uh, this uh, information session will be uh, hosted by me, uh, Dr. Tian Feng, who is program director, and uh, Dr. Jinan Zhao, uh, who is deputy program director here. Okay. Um, and by the way, we have a, a public WeChat account. So if you want to know all the details and all the activity we have done in the past in the program, you can scan the uh, two dimension code bar and, uh, uh, and then get into the WeChat public account and uh, read all the activities. But it, those activities are written in Chinese. And if you know Chinese, you can get into the WeChat account and find out. And if not, and you can go to our website and find out the detailed information. So today's agenda is a follow. We'll talk about our university, the school, and the programs and other details. And then we have Q&A &A sessions, okay. So let's start from the beginning. So our program is uh, consistent with the core value of uh, Hong Kong Polytech, that is to pursue the idea that is a, a 3D focus that is discovery, design, and the delivery for the knowledge and um, uh, education. Okay, so uh, let's come to the introduction of our school. Uh, basically, we are on the faculty of business, uh, faculty of uh, 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 business, and uh, uh, we are in the School of Accounting and Finance. For the business school, the school is a comprehensive school that has uh, um, around 4,900 students, and uh, we have uh, more than 170 world-class scholars from all around the world, okay? And the school has a long history. That's why we have uh, a lot of uh, alumni over uh, 54,000. And it comes to the business school ranking, and this is important because um, uh, once you want to find a job, or especially you try to find a job in Hong Kong or in mainland China, and uh, based on the current Hong Kong talented scheme, they also want to judge whether you are in the high rank uh, list or not, right? For example, if you uh, want to immigrate to Hong Kong and Hong Kong government will decide whether you are from the top 100 university or not. Uh, Hong Kong Polytech is one of the top 100 universities and B school. Uh, many programs are ranked within more than uh, top 30, right? For example, you can look at here, the uh, shipping is number one, and also the business and management is number two, etc. depends on which ranking you look at. But rankings matter to your graduation and to your career future. So I just emphasize here, and we are lucky enough to be ranked at among top university and top school for our uh, different programs, we are also pretty rank high. And uh, uh, the whole business school is accredited and based on uh, two well-recognized association that is AHSB and uh, uh, ACRIS. Okay, so we get accreditation every year and uh, uh, we uh, uh, accredited a, a business school and uh, uh, our program is on the School of Accounting and Finance, which is a part of a business school. And so School of Accounting and Finance has the longest history in Hong Kong. And it's first to offer professional accounting program education in Hong Kong. That's why we have a very large uh, network among accounting professionals. And also we have a quite large alumni work in finance and other related business area in Hong Kong. 
And we have uh, multiple areas in School of Accounting Finance that include accounting, finance, uh, uh, economics, law, and uh, uh, other related areas. Okay. So for our program, we focus on data analytical applications in accounting and finance. And so let's uh, briefly talk about the data analytics. Data analytics uh, to be, uh, if I explain this data analytics in one simple word, basically try to transform raw data to the knowledge and eventually help people to make decisions. So that's why I put this uh, chart here. Basically you transform the raw data into the data, information, knowledge, and eventually becomes the wisdom and become uh, to help the people to make decisions. In terms of the applications in accounting and finance, basically we try to focus on the application of data analytics in accounting and finance. That's why we call it a, a master of accounting and finance analytics that basically help you to use those techniques to transform those raw data from accounting finance and eventually become your knowledge and wisdom and help people in accounting finance to make wiser decisions. Okay, so we actually are in the age of data analytic, uh, analytics right now. And you can understand every day you uh, wake up and everything you have done is recorded and transformed to data. For example, you wake up, your iPhone just ring and those data are recorded, right? And when you order the breakfast from Food Panda or any uh, online platform, those data also are recorded and analyzed by the platform. And you um, use Uber or use the other app to call taxi and your uh, uh, data in terms of traveling from home to uh, the workplace is also recorded. And you can think a little bit more, right? You Everything you have done is transformed to the data. And in this uh, uh, age of data analytics, analytics, we have tons of data. In one or two days, we generate more, than, more data than the past thousand years or million years, right? So in terms of uh, our program, we focus on advanced data analytics. That is, uh, we try to teach you how to utilize the data analytics skills to deal with the big data. And we also teach machine learning, deep learning, et cetera, to help you to handle the data analytic age uh, problems, related problems. And this is the important way we started the program. We actually try to look at the demand and the supply side of the uh, uh, for for the program, okay? So in terms of the demand side, most CEO actually put high value on data analytics. And you can think about a lot of advanced data analytic skill and the application of data analytic skills, right? And all the CEO understand it's important uh, to utilize data analytic skill in business, especially in our program, it's in accounting finance, but there's a big barrier. The barrier is we don't have a business translator that combine the data savvy with industry and the domain expertise together. So that's why the purpose of the program is to train this type of the people who can combine both skills together. And that is uh, in high demand uh, company. And we also look at the different, when we start the program, we look at the industry survey for example, in terms of AACA uh, survey, uh, people believe in next 10, uh, three to 10 years, there are high demand in terms of data analytic scale in accounting area. And this is a, a pretty old survey. If you look at the most recent surveys, actually demand is even higher. Okay. Um, we also look at the uh, finance area and look at all the similar survey. The, uh, uh, those uh, members in CFA association actually put a high priority on the data analytics skill and the FinTech. Okay. And this is the uh, a survey from McKinsey. And the, 
we can ignore the short-term demand because we understand the short-term demand is pretty high right now. And if you look at the long-term demand, and which is not covered here because it's 2024, but long-term demand is even much higher. Okay, so that is uh, uh, overall around the world. In terms of demand in Great Bay area and in China, uh, we call a uh, Great China area that include the mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, et cetera. Uh, uh, in central government, uh, we have this uh, uh, 14 five year plan that cover a digital um, strategy of uh, central government. So since the digital strategy is uh, um, discussed and emphasized in this uh, five year plan, and you can anticipate there are lots of uh, um, resource devoted by the central government. Hong Kong government also seek to support the business application in fintech and data analytic area in accounting and finance. And uh, they also devote billions of dollars each year to support this strategy to establish the fintech center in Hong Kong. And at the same time for big four uh, auditors, international big four auditors, they establish a different data analytics center in Hong Kong and around the world. Certainly, uh, the data analytics skill uh, is uh, in high demand from industry. Okay, so that is uh, what we have uh, uh, discussed about the demand side. In terms of supply supply side, uh, traditionally most accounting finance uh, program, especially mass program only emphasize the application or traditional accounting finance skill in the business area. Uh, we actually are the first kind in Hong Kong to emphasize the technology application in accounting finance. And those technology applications include the big, big data analytics, AI, FinTech and deep learning, et cetera. And the reason we said we are the first in Hong Kong because we actually focus on both accounting and finance application in terms of um, uh, using data analytics skills. And currently we have uh, uh, some programs in Hong Kong, you have some programs that emphasize the technical part that is opened by computer science, but they emphasize more technical detail than the domain knowledge. We actually combine both of them. So that is um, uh, the current situation. We started in 2009, and this is uh, the fourth year we uh, actually uh, operated this program. And in the past, we have a large number of the applicants every year, and the application number is increasing every year. Okay. In terms of program name, as I said before, uh, we try to combine both um, data analytical knowledge with domain knowledge of accounting finance. And eventually we try to train students who can apply those advanced data analytic uh, skill in accounting finance area to solve real business problem. That is uh, basically program aims. And right now I pass my mic to uh, Deputy Director, Dr. Jin Nan Zhao to talk about more details. And Dr. Zhao, uh, that's your... Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tian. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jingan Zhao. I'm Associate Professor at the School of Accounting Finance. I'm also the Deputy Program Director for the MAFA program. So I will continue the presentation and talk about more details of our MAFA program. So our program aims to offer students the knowledge and skills in data analytics. And we also offer the core knowledge in accounting and finance. Students will also learn the applications of data analytics in accounting and finance. You will get systematic training and development of data analytics, skills and capabilities in solving business problems in accounting and finance. So lastly, you can capitalize on the opportunities offered by big data in solving accounting, finance and business problems. The key program features include that students can learn beyond traditional accounting and finance knowledge. Our program will help students deepen your understanding of fundamental 
quantitative and technical applications in accounting and finance. We also equip and apply the tools from advanced computing technologies to address real life accounting and finance problems in an ethical manner. We also offer a full array of enrichment activities offering uh, professional networking opportunities and career preparation workshops. So our programs are a mixed mode program, which means we offer both full-time and part-time options. For the full-time option, students need to take nine or more credits in a semester. For the part-time option, students can take nine or less than nine credits in a semester. So our program offers the flexibility for students to pursue study in either one of the study loads in different semesters. And students studying on student visa can only apply for the full-time mode. Okay, so for the duration, we have one or two years, depending on which options you take. For example, if you take the full-time option, then our program's normal duration is one year. If you take the part-time option, the normal duration is two years. For the class time, we offer weekday, uh, daytime and evening time classes. Um, sometimes we also have weekday classes as well to accommodate for the part-time students. For our program structure, we offer 30 credits, which means 10 subjects. The student can graduate with a postgraduate diploma upon completing the first seven compulsory core subjects, which is 21 credits. The compulsory subjects include the following nine subjects. One is accounting for business analysis. Second is contemporary issues in accounting information systems. Third is investments. Fourth is principles of corporate finance. Fifth is quantitative methods for accounting and finance. Sixth is applications of computing and technology in accounting and finance one. Seven is business analytics in accounting and finance. This is the subjects I teach in semester one. The eighth is financial analysis and valuation with programming. And the last one is applications of computing and technology in accounting and finance part two. We also offer elective subjects, okay? You can select any one of the following, accounting and financial analytics project, auditing framework, corporate risk management, derivative securities, fixed income securities, management accounting, security analysis and portfolio management, business intelligence and decisions, data structures and database systems. And the last one is artificial intelligence concepts. Right? So as you can see, these electives range from accounting, finance, and computer science or data science. Here's a suggested progression pattern. For the full-time students, we suggest that in semester one, you would take five subjects, which are all compulsory. In semester two, out of the five subjects to take, you can take four compulsory and one elective. For the part-time students, typically, as I mentioned before, the duration is two years. So in year one, in semester one, you should take three compulsory subjects. And in semester two, you can take two compulsory subjects and one elective subject. Then in year two, in both semesters, you will take two compulsory subjects. Here are some program enrichment activities that we have done in the past. Um, this is a Python programming bootcamp. So what we do is in the summer before you enter into semester one, we offer this Python programming bootcamp, which is completely voluntary for you to attend, but we highly encourage students to attend this because this will prepare you for the rest of the two semesters, whichever class that requires Python programming here, you are already prepared 
uh, with some core knowledge of Python programming. So when you enter into the semester one, semester two, you're, you will have an easier time to catch up with the lectures. And the university also offer career preparation workshop, right? Here are some slides to show, some pictures to show that. Um, so uh, we have services that to offer you, for example, how to prepare your CV, how to prepare you for job interviews. So this is also very helpful for our students to prepare for their career after they graduate. We also offer technology workshops. In these workshops, we invite industry experts in the FinTech area, also in traditional accounting finance area, to come in and talk about how the industry has adopted data analytics and FinTech. And the students can also do some networking with these uh, professionals as well. In the past, before COVID, we also arranged field visits to visit uh, companies or Hong Kong Science Park to see in the real world how data analytics and fintechs are applied in the companies. And you could also network with the company uh, management during this field visits as well. And I imagine we will uh, resume this activity uh, when the COVID is eased. Okay, next slide shows some graduate statistics. This is for the class of 2019 and 2020. Um, so our graduates, about 29% went into investment banks, 24% went into big four auditors, about 14% went into big tech firms or tech regulators such as Tencent, 14% went to investment group, 14% went to uh, real estate developers, and about 10% went to commercial banks, and 5% went into PhD programs, okay? And in general, for our class profile for our missions, um, the students range between 20s and 40s, and the average years of working experience is two years, and our gender ratio of male and female is one to two. Now let's talk about the entrance requirements. Okay, so applicants will require applicant to have at least a bachelor degree. The preference will be given to applicants with a business degree who are equipped with some fundamental training in computing or graduates with a background in computing science or engineering. The interested applicants with little or no working experience can also apply. If you're not a native speaker of English and your bachelor degree or equivalent qualification are awarded by institutions where the medium instruction is not English, then you are expected to fulfill the university's minimum English language requirement for admission purpose. So please refer to the admission requirements section for details. A test of English as a foreign language TOEFL score of 80 for the internet-based test or 550 for the paper-based test um, is required, or an overall band score of at least six in the International English Language Testing System, i.e. LTS, uh, is also required. The English language qualification other than above will be considered individually on their own merit, okay? And applicants may be required to attend interviews or test to further demonstrate their language proficiency. So for the 2023 and 2024 intake, uh, we plan to take 150 students, okay? And for the tuition fee, the local students will pay 274,500 per program for the 30 credits. The non-local students tuition is 300,000 and 309, thousand um, for the 30 credits. For credit transfer, students may be given credit for previous postgraduate study relevant to their current programs. The students may apply for credit transfer upon initial enrollment on the program. The validity period of subjects earned is eight years from the year of attainment. 
which means a year in which the subject is completed. The credits transferred will come towards credit requirement for the award. Okay, so if you have questions, feel free to reach out to our program director, Dr. Tianfeng, and or you can reach out to me uh, by phone or by email. Also, you can reach out to our administration. Uh, the telephone number is listed here and also the email is here. Um, the website or our website, uh, you can also go there to find more detailed information. And lastly, our application link is here and our deadline for applying is April 30th this year. Okay, so that's all for our presentation. Next is Q&A section. So if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask directly, or you can type in the chat box. Any other questions? So we probably wait for 
uh, two more minutes if there's no people to ask questions, we end today's session. Any other questions uh, regarding the admission, the program? Okay, so uh, if you don't have question currently, but if you have any question after the session, you may email us by sending the email to the uh, AFA office, or you can call us or send email to me or Dr. Jin Nan Zhao for the details. And um, if you, you also can uh, reach out to the uh, university for other requirement especially if you are not from the English speaking universities, you need to have uh, satisfy the English requirement. Okay. And as I said, uh, I just repeat one more time. You can go to our program website for the detail of the information about the program. If you, uh, if you know Chinese and you have WeChat account, you can scan the barcode uh, of our public WeChat account and to get to know the details of the programs. So we keep posting those information about our program activities, et cetera. Okay, thank you for attendance here and thank you for support us. And so we can end the session now, Boris? Or we have to wait? Okay. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Okay, have a good day.